Go with me, if you would, to Kings, 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. 2 Kings 6, verse 8. I'm going to read this passage here to help understand if God be for us, who can be against us. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. This is about three nations. Syria, Samaria, and Israel. All right, and it's about the prophet Elisha, the one that came along after Elijah. All right, this is one with the S in it, all right? So uh, there's a whole lot happens in these verses, but there's just a couple of things that i got to point out to you so that we can understand if God be for us, then who can be against us? Verse number, chapter 6, verse number 8. Then the king of Syria, and it's the same Syria that you see on your map today, warred against Israel. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. In other words, they're making a war plan. They're sitting looking at the table, and they're making a war plan to go in and, you know, attack Israel. And verse number 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel. So this is Elisha. Different nation. Changed verses. And we changed nations, all right? The other, verses, the other verse was about Syria. And the man of God, Elisha, sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, for thou that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. In other words, don't go over here, because the nation of Syria is going to be over there to kill you. So don't go over there. It's kind of like insider trading, but it's legal, all right? And so anyway, he said, don't go over there. All right, verse number 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there not once nor twice. In other words, this is the Bible way of saying this was a repeated process that Elisha, Miss Debbie, knew what was going on. He could see in the spirit world where they were going to get attacked at, so he'd have them somewhere else. So Syria is chasing this ghost. I hate I don't like the word ghost, but Syria is chasing this ghost. That's what electricians call something short they can't find is chasing a ghost. And sometimes you just, if it ain't... Anyway, how many has had a ghost in your vehicle before in the electrical part? You don't. You go to the shop and it don't. It works fine at the shop. Anybody know what I'm talking about now? I figured I'd get you right there. All right. And so, and so here we got this war machine that's chasing a ghost. Verse number eleven. And the reason they're doing that is because the man of God could see where they were going to be. And he said, "Don't go over there." So let's just wire them down. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this. In other words, he was upset. He said, I don't know what, and called his servants, his very, I mean, the ones that would get around the war table with him and called them in and said unto them, will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, which one of you is a spy in here, Dr. B? He said, now somebody at this table is telling them where we're going. Notice next verse, verse 12. And one of his servants said, none of us, my Lord, O king, but Elisha. That prophet, it's always the preacher's fault, you know what I'm saying? And that is in Israel. Said he, you know, he tells the king the words that you speak in your bedchamber. I mean, he, he sees these things and he just knows these things. And so we ain't got one of them, okay? And so, but he does. And here we go. We're just chasing the goats. Verse 13. And so you need to uh, stay close. If you can't hear from God yourself, stay close to somebody that can. And he said, go and spy. He said, what are going to do? We've got to go figure out where this guy is, that he may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. So they figured out where Elisha was at. So they went up there. Okay, they can't, get a, they can't attack Israel because they can't catch them. Elisha's not the kind of guy that runs. So they figured out where he was at, Mark, and so they go. Verse number, uh, next verse, Miss Lynn, verse 14. Therefore sent he hither horses, chariots, a great host, I mean, they, Elisha must be one bad dude, all right? So it's kind of like the, and they came by night and they compassed the city about. Kind of like the John Wayne movie, Big Jake. I think that's the name of it. And he, they got the grandchild and they all down there and Richard Boone and all them down there. So they get down there with this chest full of money. They're supposed to be full of money, but it's actually newspaper clippings. And so, uh, and so they got like five people uh, with rifles and all this kind of stuff on John Wayne. He says, I must be one bad dude. You know, got all these people on him. Well, that's the situation you got here. He sent the whole army to go around the city, verse 15. Uh, in other words, if you're hearing from God on this planet and doing something for God on this planet, there's going to be some warfare there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Any of y'all had any? Everything just went perfect this week? No issues? No? Okay, y'all so down, y'all can't even talk about it. That's okay. All right. And when the servant of the man of God, so Elisha's servant, he got up early, 
And he went forth, and behold, a host can pass the city, both with horses, chariots, and his servants unto him. Alas, my master, how, how shall we do? In other words, it's, it, it's looking pretty rough outside. I mean, we've got some serious issues here. All right, verse 16. And he answered, Elisha the prophet said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Amen. Okay? So we can say amen like Miss Arlene said by faith, but at this point in the game, the servant hadn't seen them yet. And he was thinking, I'm sure, like we would be thinking, I don't know which house you're looking out, on which window you're looking out, but the window I looked at, it didn't look too good. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay? You're looking at your week, thinking, oh my God, I'm hope I can just make it to next Saturday. All right? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Come on, i got to get it relate to you. All right, I'm going to raise both my hands. And he answered, said, fear not, there's more for us than to be there for them. Sometimes, how many knows it don't feel that way? That's why we've got to build our faith in the Word of God. If God be for us, who can be against us? All right, next verse, verse number 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Let, let my helper see that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and the chariots of fire round about Elisha. In other words, Elisha could take on the whole army by himself. Why? Because of this unseen warriors of angels and the angelic host of God that's on our side. So God's watching over us and taking care of us, or we wouldn't even be here today. Everybody say amen, all right? God's taking care of us, all right? Next, next verse. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. You know, because there's more of them. They got all this stuff, this big war machine. And there's a famine going on too. And so it's a lot of bad stuff happening. And he said, I pray God smite them with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So, okay, here you got. You got Syria that's come to attack Israel, but they can't never get them because Elisha the prophet sees where they're going to attack at. And so he has the army somewhere else. And so you got Syria's going to attack Israel. Just like still today, it ain't a whole lot changed, all right? Just have cars today, and cars, the internet, pretty much about the same. And other than that, they're still over there trying to attack Israel, all right? They're going to lose this battle. They just don't get it yet, all right? Verse number 19. And Elijah said unto them, this is not the way he... Uh, now, he's talking to the Syrian army. They're blind. And he said, this is not the way. Y'all got on the wrong road. And so... Uh, Neither is this the city. He said, y'all on the wrong road at the wrong place. Of course, they can't see. He said, just follow me. I'll just lead you to where you need to be. But he led them to Samaria. Didn't nobody like the Samaritans, all right? I don't have time to give you all that history, but didn't know. they're that one neighbor, in the, that one friend you know, that you can't get rid of. You know what I'm saying? They just won't go away. Y'all, come on, talk to me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, the person drives up to visit, and you think, well, you know, you can't hurt his feelings. I mean, how many you've got a friend you cannot hurt their feelings? No matter what you say to them, they just keep coming back. Can I get an amen? All right, well, that's kind of the way the Samaritans were. Nobody liked them. And so Elijah said unto them, this is not the way he's talking to Syria now. And so he leads them, this whole blind army said, y'all just follow my voice. He takes them over to Syria, verse number 20. And I say, Lord, take my enemies somewhere else, Okay. There's some other folks somewhere else who's been laying around on the beach eating moon pies and drinking Mountain Dews, and, uh, you know, they, they ain't got nothing to do no way. So you go over there and take them over there, Lord. And it came to pass, so you don't want to do that, brother. Scott. Well, Elisha did it. i got to have a break. Can I get an amen? amen? These other folks laying up like a summer coon, they ain't doing nothing but eating corn and sleeping. Uh, and it came to pass, they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men. He took them over there. And now he's done struck them blind. Poor things has done run ragged just trying to chase the enemy every which way. And open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. They said, my God, we done surrounded by our enemy now. So they had a problem. God's the only one to give your enemy these kind of problems. You'll wear yourself out fighting some battles. Some battles you can handle, but some are far greater than what we can handle. Some are far greater than what we can deal with. Skip on to verse 23. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And if they went their master, and notice this last part. In other words, they wanted to kill them. If you read the rest of the story, you'll find out that the Samaritans said, let's just kill them. And Elijah said, no, you've got to treat them like prisoners of war. And so uh, anyway, but notice the last part. 
So they fed them. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Amen. In other words, they said, you know, I don't, we're going to jump on somebody else. They don't want us to be. They, they got an ace up their sleeve that's not going to go away. We thought this was a good plan, but it didn't work out too good. We surrounded the whole city, and now we got, went blind. And I mean, can you imagine them reporting back to the king, you know, telling them what all was going on? I'm sure the king thought, you know, we done spent all our money, we wasted all our time, y'all done gone blind, and now you said you come back see it, and now you're over here in Samaria and you're a bunch of prisoners of war. Said, dear God, we ain't even fought nobody yet we done lost. You don't see what So God let our enemies be blinded today in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but uh, I need God to shut them back because <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. But he's not. Now go back, Lynn, to Romans 8, 31. I think our verse for the year might have more meaning now. All right? Romans 8, 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? You come up against stuff that you can't handle. You get surprised with stuff. The, book, the Bible talks about sudden fears that come against us, surprises. How many know sometimes when that phone rings, you get a phone call you did not see coming, no kind of which way or another. And so when that happens, what do you do? You've got to trust Him because it's done happened and you can't fix it. You can't fix something after it's happened. God's got to go back and reverse it. Can I get an amen? What shall we say then to these things? If God be for me, who can be against me? That's what kind of attitude we've got to have. And 12 months from now, when we get out of this year, we're going to have that attitude deep down in us. If God is for me, who can come against me? And so, you ever get in a situation that looks good when you start off? You ever order something at a restaurant? Let me, let me, get, let me get it on down. That just looks so good, but when you get it to your plate, you get it to your table, you thought, I won't get this again. Huh? Big D, you tell he ain't losing no weight. He said he'd just reorder, okay? All right? <laughs> I've had that happen before. If you go to a steakhouse, order a steak. Don't order spaghetti. Okay? If you want spaghetti, go to Olive Garden. That's Italian. You got y'all with me? All right? I was just thinking about some of my experiences, but I'm going to try to... What time is it? All right. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Go to the next verse, verse 32. Because God is good, and we can fight so many battles, and we start losing sight of that. Can I get an amen? amen. We can get beat down so with especially things we don't understand. They... You see, if we understand it, we might can deal with it. And I've had some health issues all of my life. I've been in pain, all kind of stuff. But Angela, I know my body. When it does this, I know why it did this. My knee, I had knee surgeries in 2015, and I've torn my meniscus in my right knee again. Okay? And so I know when my knee's hurt. And so I got two cho three choices. God can touch it and heal it. I can wear a knee brace a lot, or I can go have surgery. All right. Surgery may or may not fix it. Maybe hurting worse when you come out. No offense to our surgeons, all right? But I mean, everybody, everything is different. So I'm going to just pray and uh, put a knee brace on it. I'm going to give God a little time to work on it, okay? Because I done had two knee surgeries, and now I've tore it again. Because these big number 12 and 13s, when I get out of my truck, I know exactly when I tore it this time. The doctor said, what would you do? I said, well, my foot got caught up in the truck. The rest of me was out here, and some of me was up in here. Can I get, come on, talk to me a little bit. Yeah. So I know exactly what I did. So why did you do that? Well, I really didn't plan on it that day. I'm sure I was getting up a little too much speed. And here comes them Syrians, bless God. They're like ants, all right? Have you ever been in an ant bed before? I mean, you there. I don't know what the deal is, Mel, but they, it's like 5,000 of them on each foot. And then one of the hollers bite all at the same time. You ever notice that? <laughs> Guess what? Everything that comes against you is not that easy to deal with. You understand what I'm saying? And you're going to need God to step in and do some things. If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, he spared not his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. 
In other words, he hung him on the cross. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God loves us. I don't care what happened to us in 2018. It's over. Okay? We can file it. And you can, depending on how good or bad that year was, you can file it right up the front or you can file it all the way back in the back. Don't even have to look at it no more. All right? And so we got us a whole new year. Verse, ni- verse 19. We're in verse 19 now. Chapter 2019. All right? And so... I'm believing God for it to be a good year because of this verse right here. He said He'd freely give us all things because Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed His blood, washed my sins away, put the Spirit of God in me when I met Him when I was 20 years of age and I got saved and born again. And He put His Spirit in me, put His Spirit on me, and now I have access to the throne of God the Father who is not only the creator of this earth, but He is the sovereign overruler of this earth and He is my Father and I can go to Him anytime and ask Him. Or things and God answers prayers and some prayers we have to pray a lot longer. Rudy's had some uh, spots come up on his lungs, some X-rays or whatever, and we was concerned it was cancer. But guess what? He got a good check this week. Why? Because we just didn't quit praying. We just keep praying. Okay. And a lot of you've experienced that. Some of you are still dealing with some stuff. Jesus prayed for a blind man and he prayed for him. He said, uh, "Can you see?" And he said, "Well, I can see, but the men's tall as trees." He said, "Well, let me pray for you again." Sometimes you have to pray more than once. Okay. You have to pray more than once. Don't quit praying because if God be for us, who can be against us? Because there's many stories in the Bible just like this. There's more for us than it is for them. Some things God will just have to go before you and work out. Say, God, I can't work it out, but you can. If God's for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Because sometimes you can't fix it. Anybody ever been on a bad airplane ride in a storm? I mean like a real bad one. How many knows that that'll make an atheist pray? You're about anywhere from 20 to 40,000 feet. It'll also make an 18-year-old uh, crazy person pray, okay? It'll sober you up quicker. The quickest thing to sober you up is a good plane ride, about 30 people on it. They used to have this shuttle that flew from Jackson to New Orleans in 79, 80, 81 when I worked on a riverboat. And every time I flew to New Orleans to catch a boat, I don't know what the deal is, but it was coming a thunderstorm every time I flew down there. And a plane with 30 passengers on it ain't that big. I couldn't even stand up in it. And so uh, we were flying into New Orleans, and I mean, this thunderstorm, and so I mean, you had to put your belt on tighter. It literally throw you in the floor. And so I hear this noise. Just, just all of a sudden, just I'm thinking, dear God, this, we're finna go down. It ain't been two months since that one landed up here in the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all wasn't even born then, but some of y'all probably remember that. That guy from Mississippi busted the ice and swam out there to get him. Uh, it kind of cut back on my flying career there for a couple of trips, but I unfortunately rode a bus one time home, and I unfortunately rode a train from Memphis one time home, and so then I went back to flying, okay? And so if you do die, it'll be quick. Some of y'all get to that after a while. If you ever rode a bus, <laughs> anyway, Anyway, the plane was just, I'm talking about crazy. And I mean, these awful noises, lightning, thundering, and I'm not even close to being saved, okay? I wasn't even sober when we got on the plane, but I'm sober now, baby. I'm on Jesus. I'm on the Jesus team. I'm never going to commit another sin as long as I live. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. How many of y'all made them prayers before? Yeah, there you go. Amen. Everybody knows in prison, they write me and say, I'm on the Jesus team now. Amen. Well, the prisoner put you on the Jesus team. Thank God I didn't have to go to prison. Anyway, this, this little bitty petite girl, she's a little bitty. She wasn't even hardly taller than the seats. So she come running up the aisle. I'm thinking, God, the tails fell off because she was seated at the back. I said, back then, you just sat wherever you wanted to. And so I sat at the front and stuck my long legs up toward the cockpit. And uh, they left the door open so you could see the pilot and co-pilot. There. And I mean, it's probably not a good place to sit. You know what I'm saying? When you see them doing this right here, and you, don't, you know they don't know what's going to happen. They hope they, I mean, they're, they know they're going to die because they've been in the plane before. And so uh, then she goes up to the cockpit, and the co-pilot jumps up, and they both run back to the back. And I hear it go, get silent. You know, silence is not always good. <laughs> right before a tornado blows you away, it gets real still and quiet. That's what they told me when I was a kid anyway. Uh, but dear God, they told me everything. Anyway, and the pi- co-pilot comes running back up to get back in his seat. I said, what's wrong? He said, oh, that vent just fell out again. <laughs> I thought to myself, bless God, I'd fix that vent for the betterment of your, pa- of your passenger. You understand what I'm saying? Whew. 
I was going to tell you what I did when I got off the plane, but I'm not going to go that far with it, all right? So, if God be for us, who can be against us? The vent may fall out every other day. I think mine's like stuck out right now. You know what I'm saying? We can't find the screws to put it back in. And so I'm thinking I'd give me some F-26 or some duct tape. I don't know what the world did for duct tape, but uh, I'm thinking about duct taping up some holes. You know, you know, you, some of y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? Because you can't hold your hand over two, on more than two holes at a time. All right? And I feel like one of them frogs stuck on the windshield of the car. You got all four of your feet. I don't know if frogs have feet or not. Whatever they got. They got four legs, ain't they? Yeah, they got four legs. And so uh, that's what I feel like sometimes. Can y'all, y'all understand what I'm talking about? The turbulence is getting a little crazy. So it's kind of like that preacher. The man went up went to pick him up at the motel, take him to the church. He's driving about 85 or 90 back to the church. It's late. And the preacher that was preaching the revival said, Sir, you, you reckon you ought to slow down? He said, no, the angels is, is riding with us. He said, you blew them off back there about 75. And so, uh, <clears throat> if God be for us, who can be against us? When I was talking about driving, just then I had this flash of all the teenagers I know on Facebook is holding their license up. It's never driven anything. So you might want to pray this prayer a lot, okay? Can I get an Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us?